Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me once again today, and welcome back to Dominions 5, Warriors of the Faith. So, we're picking right back up where we left off. We have just taken the Throne of Winter. We have not, however, claimed it yet. Uh, to claim a throne, I need either my Pretender God or a Holy Three unit. And since I can't actually recruit any Holy Three priests, uh, the best I get is the Fomorian King, who is a priest level 2. The only other person who can claim thrones is my prophet, Fogatak, who gets Holy Three as part of becoming the prophet. Um, he also has Heroic Valor, which is nice. So I have dropped off Fogatak's units to Lysimachos here, and Fogatak himself is on his way over to the throne. It'll take him a few turns to get there. So speaking about what's going to be coming next, um, over here I have Cognat forging an owl quill to help him research. This fortress is recruiting Firbolg Druids, however, since it only has one commander point, in order to crank out a druid per turn, I need to upgrade the fortification to a giant fortress. That will cost, unfortunately, here I can show you, it'll cost 450 gold. Which I don't have at the moment. My income is not great. Um, my recruitment is not too terribly expensive, except for Fomorian druids, who cost quite a bit. I may switch back to Firbolg Druids, since right now I'm mainly using them as research monkeys. That'll save me some money and let me uh, hopefully get that fortress upgraded sooner. So uh, my army over here, I'm moving uh, Froikan, who has an Owl Quill, back to research. I'm moving Brianane over, I, I can't pronounce these Irish names, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it the way it looks. I'm moving Bria here uh, down to join the army because I do want to keep the general practice of having some mages with lightning bolt scripted to support my troops. And I've got my two unmarked commanders. Actually what I may do is I think I'm going to shift all of these troops down into Angus's army and have Oegre move up here to pick up some troops from uh, Fomoria since I'm recruiting some more Nemedian warriors. And I also have a few slingers ready. So next turn, hopefully, I'll have enough gold stockpiled over here to build a uh, to build the upgrade to the fort. I'm recruiting a Firbolg druid who will be done in two turns. I'm not recruiting. I'm not recruiting any other troops from this fortress at the moment. Uh, heavy cavalry are an option, and could be a pretty cool option for flanking maneuvers. I could get. I, uh, recruitment points are the problem. They cost 36 recruitment points each, and I only have 106. So I can recruit most of three. Yeah. Not hardly worth it at the moment. Uh, it doesn't cost much gold to do that, but anyway. Um, listen, Makos is just going to sit here for the moment. My next goals. Uh, I am at war with Oceana. Now... This has pros and cons. As a con, from this position, they're able to hit a lot of my provinces very, very easily, and I'm going to have trouble defending against them. On the other hand, I do have access to troops that can go down underwater and fight them. I have Fomorian Giants, which are very, very tough and sacred. I have Fomorian Kings, which are amphibious and powerful, powerful mages. Uh, potentially level 4 air or level 3 death, and someone in the comments reminded me I can actually use uh, lightning bolts underwater. I don't know if I can use thunder strike. I can't use thunder strike, but I can use lightning bolts, and I can use orb lightning. So you know, my my combat magic does work underwater. I can also summon skeletons underwater. They're only poor amphibians, if I recall correctly, but that is also an option. So research-wise. I'm heading up the evocation tree. I may want to grab at least the first three levels of enchantment soon, so that I have raised skeletons, which is the basic kind of skeleton spamming spell. And then at level four, you get raised dead, which raises a whole bunch of crappy, terrible zombies. Uh, then at level five, you get the real skelly spamming spell, which is horde of skeletons. But in any case, that is all in the future. Right now, uh, I am going down the evocation tree. I want to go down at least to... Um, level 4 to get Thunderstrike. I might go all the way to level 5 
to get Orb Lightning. I do have Conjuration level 3, which means I have access to uh, some of the summoning spells, including Summon Lesser Water Elemental, which is a combat spell, and uh, Summon Yetis, which might be a good one to be casting if I had Water 2 Mages, which I don't at the moment. Uh, once I get some death magic, I can uh, sight search remotely with dark knowledge, and I can revive whites and banes and all that kind of stuff. But so at the moment, uh, soon I'll want to be recruiting uh, a Fomorian king or two, and some Fomorian giants, to go over here and try to kick in the teeth of Oceana. Right at the moment, however, I kind of want to build up my money so I can get that second lab running, and I can start pumping out more druids from over here more efficiently. So we're just going to end the turn at the moment. Uh, first, let me see if there are any... Uh, you need to be forging your owl quill. Thank you. My scout is just hiding over here. Uh, he can keep moving. Just kind of see what's over in this direction. I might actually, instead of starting on another wizard, I might recruit a scout or two. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get a couple more scouts just so I can kind of see what's going on. Oh, four commanders are doing nothing, apparently. Uh, you need to search for magic sites. You can move up this way. I have another scout right here who can also advance. And Lysimachos is defending. I'll set him to patrol, just in case. Okay, so we found a magic site, the Thunder Oak, and there was a battle in Gladewood. I think I've been attacked. Yes, Oceana has attacked me. Okay, so let's look at what they have. They have some Ichthus Centaurs, they have some Ichthus Satyr Warriors, and they have their Capricorn with a whole bunch of gems. Like a lot of gems. Wonder what he's doing with them. It looks like he's casting Air Shield to protect himself from missiles. Which is appropriate since basically all I have here is Slingers. Uh, his Centaurs are flanking me, which is unfortunate. Cold Bolt came in. Um, I don't think the Slingers are going to do too terribly, terribly well. Well, this Centaur is going down. Yep, that Centaur is about to die. But he's also about to take out my leadership, if I'm not mistaken. Let's speed it up a little bit. Yeah, because my, uh, my Firbol Champion here and my Mounted Commander are both in the same place. There goes the Mounted Commander, and there goes the Firbol Champion. So, my armies are now routed, and my troops are going to futilely hurl themselves into a wall of superior infantry and die without accomplishing anything. Okay, so. I, I killed a Centaur, and I killed one Satyr Warrior, so, eh, not very good. I had an unexpected event. Ah, uh, Perpetual Winter. Uh, got some free gems, that's nice. And more free gems? No. Oh, Eagle Reach Mountains got ill omens, great. So where did the Frozen Lands? The Frozen Lands spread to here. So I'm actually getting quite a few water gems just from these Frozen Lands, which is, uh, which is pretty neat, to be honest. So that scout can move down this away. Uh, I have 700 gold now, so you can now construct... Actually, actually, I'll tell you what. This scout, that scout can build the giant fortress while Cognat starts to research. So research is up to 77 a month. Uh, two more turns and I'll hit evocation level 3. Uh, I'm once again recruiting Firbolg druids. Let me get these guys into his army, and he can head over in this direction. My main army, meanwhile, uh, Brienon can have the Lightning Bolt script. Oh, and I need to um, set them all to cast spells as well. There we go. So yeah, so this is a very defensive script. Um, now, one thing that has to be considered is, as you've seen, the AI will tend to flank aggressively, which they did not necessarily do in Dominions 4. That being so, it might be worthwhile to assign some bodyguards. Or, at least, to put the mages in the middle of the slingers, where they are less vulnerable. 
Yeah, let's do that. Let's just put them in the middle of the slingers for now. So you guys move up to this fortress. Um, so I found a magic site up there, the Thunder Oak, which gives me an air gem every turn. That's nice. And what else? Uh, you're researching. I really want to uh, search these sites for magic sites as well. But with all these Oceanan troops in the way, I don't know if that's wise. I think I'd probably just be getting Cognat killed if I did. So instead, I'm going to hang tight. Uh, pretty soon, my, my god should show up. And once my god shows up, the game will change just a little bit because he has a ton of magic available. At this point, however, I think I might... Well, as soon as this fortress is done, I'm going to swap over to recruiting my big mages at my capital, so Fomorian kings and Nemedian sorceresses. Uh, but that's only once I have this set up to pump out research, research monkeys every turn. So I think that is actually going to be close to the end of my turn. Uh, what do I have up here? Oh, Fairball Warriors, cool. Um, nothing else much up in this area. Let's see how far they've spread. Keep the scouts moving on. Uh, you can head back down. So with his map move of 16, which is fairly fast, he can actually hop two provinces in a single turn, which is nice. Uh, you're just defending. You should be researching. Actually, can you cast a ritual spell? Ah, you can cast Call of the Winds. Call of the Winds is very, very circumstantial. It costs a number of gems, and it summons a very, very weak uh, force. But what it does is it summons a force of flying units in an enemy uh, territory, even an enemy territory quite a long ways away. So that can be useful in some circumstances. It's not always useful. Um, as I said, it's quite circumstantial, but sometimes. Sometimes it's a really good idea. Mm, none of these are very valuable. So you just research. Yeah, 96 research points a month. That's quite a bit better. Okay, so General Confusion, God of Fomoria, God of Terror, King of Death and Rebirth, Warrior Against the Sun has awakened. I've got my god here. An unexpected event in Falgoth, got some earth gems, and there was a battle in Nashen. Let's view that battle. Once again, they're attacking me. They're just sending in these raiding parties uh, against my relatively weak province defense to just peel away all the provinces they can. And that's fine. I expect them to do this. Uh, it's not unusual. It's pretty much what I would do in their circumstances. I basically just need to gather enough forces to counter it. Right now they're busting through because they basically have all their good units concentrated in one place. And my good units are in a separate army that's a little ways away. So, um, I killed an Ichthatar, which is fine, but, you know. They are cutting down my income, and they're doing damage. Now, I think... I can take that army with my army. Numbers are approximately equivalent, and I have magical support that they don't have. I'm still recruiting scouts there, which I should not be. Uh, let's switch back to recruiting wizards. And while we're here, let's start recruiting some heavy cavalry just for funsies. So, General Confusion has arrived. Four levels of air magic, two levels of water magic, and seven levels of death magic. In addition, his combat abilities are quite potent. He does have glamour, so he's constantly uh, mirror-imaged. He is a reanimator, so when he kills somebody, the odds are they have an even chance of being raised as a soulless, an undead, to fight on his side. And he has fear and shock resistance and amphibian and all this. The cool thing about him, besides being a really you know powerful unit on the by himself, is that now that he's on the field all of my wizards also have that reanimator trait. So anything they kill has a 50% chance to be raised as a soulless. Let me see, is there anything interesting he can forge that other people cannot forge? Hmm... Not really, except for horror helmets. Since he has death magic, he can force them. Are there any spells he can cast that other people can't cast? He can revive whites, he can summon black dogs, which aren't terribly impressive. He can summon Shades. And Shades are Ethereal, so that might actually be worth doing, because Ethereal units are very hard to hit, and they have a draining attack. Plus, number of effects 5 plus, it gets one extra for every extra level the caster is. So this requires level 2. 
he's level 7, which means when General Confusion casts Summon Shades, he gets 10 instead of 5 because he has 5 extra levels. Uh, he can also summon yetis, although since the main path for summon yetis is water, he would not get any extra. Mm. Corpse Man Construction is something that I could actually spam later on. There, there are a couple of items you can forge that give you extra Corpse Men. Corpse Men are, I mean, they suck, but they have a lot of hit points, so they're excellent blockers. I think... I think I'm going to cast actually Dark Knowledge, honestly. I think for right now... I don't have anything that I really need him to be doing at the moment. I mean, I could... If he's in battle, he doesn't have anything terribly special except Lightning Bolt that he can cast. Does do significantly more damage when he casts it. But... But at the moment, I think I want him to either research or summon shades for me. Let's move him up to this uh, this forward fort. I'm going to send my army to take back this province because it has a significant amount of income. I'm going to buff this province's defense by, like, a lot. Now, it is still only Ichthyids, but they might be able to do some damage. And I'm going to buff this province's defense by a lot. I'm spending a lot of money, probably more than I really should, but hopefully it'll be worth it. I'm actually going to... let me see. He's got Nemedian Warriors, and that's not a terribly powerful enemy force. So let's actually move him right there. I've got Defense 10 here, plus the Fortification. You research. And the Fortification will be done in... the upgrade will be done in two months. Okay, I'm going to take my Mage Supported Army and attack up this way. Now, they are probably going to try to move away, and I don't know which way they're going to jump. But whether they jump or not, I think I'll win this fight and get the province back. And Angus is dropping blessings that should hit all of the mages pretty effectively. So yeah, if they stand and fight, I think I'll win. If they move away, I'll definitely win, and then their army will be kind of cut off behind my lines, and I'll be able to... Uh, handle it pretty effectively, I think. I am going to get a few slingers over here. Alright, who's doing nothing? Uh, you are a scout. You can move. The scouts continue to move forward. Okay. Okay, we had a couple of battles, and an unexpected event in Jintmark. Oh, okay, so we got a cursed unit. Okay, let's look at Nashin. So here's my army, and they moved. So this is just province defense. But at least we'll get to see how Reanimator works, if it's very efficient or not. Okay, we've got the blessing down. Militia, stunned, limping, okay. Why aren't all the lightning bolts going off? Are they all casting lightning bolt on the same target or something? Or are the lightning bolts all going back here? It really looks like not all the lightning bolts are getting cast. Ah, okay, so that one worked. So yeah, when he was hit by that lightning bolt, he turned into a soulless warrior. A stunned soulless warrior, unfortunately, but a soulless warrior. So basically that lets me spawn extra chaff. Um, and then they went off script and cast air shield on themselves, of all things. Interesting. Hmm. And I don't know why they're casting summon storm power when there's no storm, but hey... Good for them, I guess. So the Fomorian, Fomorian Druids, Fomorian Druids, wow, I can't talk, literally inflicted all the casualties. Okay, and then we had a battle in Queen Forest. All right, so the enemy army pushed further into my territory and ran into this block of Ichthyids. Let's see how that went for them. Probably pretty well, because they're much more powerful than Ichthyids. 
Ichthyscentaurs, and ah yes, these are the Aphroi. So these are the sacred ones that have poison barbs and recuperation. Well, all Ichthyscentaurs have recuperation. So this is just going to be a straight-up slugfest. Okay, we did net some of them, which is good. Yep, netting and doing damage. So the, the Ichthyids are actually doing a reasonable amount of damage to the high-value enemy targets, which is great. Looks like they've killed all the Ichthyscentaurs and a good deal of the infantry, and they've killed all the Ichthyars. Well, they killed all the Ichthyars, I meant. Um, oh, holy crap, they won! Wow. I didn't expect that, so why did they win? It was the nets. They won because of the nets. When they used the nets on the Ichthyars and Ichthyscentaurs, they really destroyed their effectiveness. Yeah, you can see here, the Ichthyars, which normally would do a ton of damage because they can trample, only got five kills. The Ichthyscentaurs only got three kills, the Aphroids only got six. So they were killing about one unit each before they got netted and swarmed. The Ichthyscentaur warriors, on the other hand, who didn't get netted, they got 22 kills just because they're superior units to the Ichthyids and Ichthyid warriors. Okay, but so that army was wiped out by my 20 points of province defense, which is always nice. Uh, so now I have upgraded to a... No, I haven't upgraded yet. I'm just uh, recruiting. All right, that's nice. So we're going to send him in here. Uh, there's a single siren and a small amount of province defense. There's some archers there, Ichthyscentaur warriors, and Aphroids. I want to kind of keep my armies together, but um, we'll see. So at this point, I am going to recruit a Fomorian king, which will take a while. And then I'm going to start recruiting some Fomorian giants. Because I want to be able to take them underwater. Actually... Fomorian kings have Gift of Water Breathing 50. Fomorian giants are amphibious. The problem actually isn't the water breathing. The problem is that non-amphibious units suffer really serious combat penalties underwater. So if you take above ground troops underwater against underwater troops, uh, they get absolutely thrashed. You are going to claim the Throne of Winter. So I will be able to recruit Mages of Winter, which are pretty nice, and I'll also get more Water Gems. <laughs> Yet more Water Gems. So, and I'm getting some Heavy Cavalry over here to help on the land, which is great. Actually, to be honest, uh, I'm not too scared of Oceana taking my provinces back from me, so I'm going to move that army up here to attack this... Uh, this force, which has a pretty decent income in Bright Gate, and a decent amount of recruitment points as well. General Confusion, meanwhile, is going to cast Summon Shades. I keep forgetting my scouts. I want to see, I don't think there's any other factions over this way. I think it's, oh yeah, th this is a four faction, well this is a four faction game, so there should be, Machaka should be somewhere. Where is Machaka? They're either in this corner or in this corner. It's the only places I haven't been, so we'll see. Okay, several battles. A worldwide event has occurred. Okay, cold plus one. Construction of the giant fortress is complete. Great. Cast summon shades. Excellent. Battle in Gladewood. Ah, that's me attacking them with my, uh, my little infantry force. And they are fighting me with a tiny province defense force, mainly of slingers. So this is not going to go terribly well. Their slingers are shooting at my slingers. My slingers are better, but theirs are more numerous. Uh, my Numidians are throwing their javelins in and then charging into combat. One of them has lost his uh, protection, but that won't be enough to save these slingers from being stabbed to death. Battle's over. Uh, yeah, no casualties on my side. Our undefended province, Nashin, has been conquered by the enemy. There was a battle in Bright Gate. Let's see how that one went. This one should be interesting because they have a bunch of cavalry. So, I've got my line, my slingers, and my wizards. Over here, I've got uh, a pretty decent mass of heavy cavalry with a point of experience each. And then behind them, some light cavalry with javelins, some militia, and one priest. Thank you. 
Okay, got some lightning bolts coming down. We are blessed. Okay, we're hitting the heavy cavalry there. Ooh, diseased. Wow, I diseased him with a lightning bolt. That's crazy. Yep, got some more lightning bolts killing folks. Are they blessed? Yes, they're blessed. So they have their precision plus four and reanimate. Yep, there goes the reanimation. Uh, he's... What is he? His model changed. Well, and I got a soulless warrior. So, the independent armies are routed. I'm not sure if that's a graphical glitch or if I'm just not getting my lightning bolts actually cast. It may be... Because lightning bolt is pretty long range. I don't know. There, those lightning bolts hit. But see, you hear those sounds, but you don't see any animation. So I wonder if there isn't some kind of a... Some kind of a problem there. Maybe they're just out of range. Anyway. So, that was a very good fight. I did lose one slinger. But I killed all of the enemy. And then, a battle in Hipperboki. Hipperbochi. He's attacking me. Okay, he's attacking down here. With mercenaries. Mercenary archers, it looks like. Who are you? Arnod the captain. Yeah, Arnod's archers. Mercenary unit. I do actually have some heavy infantry, so who knows? Heavy infantry are not particularly vulnerable to archers. Because they do have shields as well as pretty decent armor. They hit my commander, it looks like, though, and it looks like they may have... Uh, well, my heavy infantry are all routing. So, okay. Yep, and I routed. Well, that was disappointing. I did kill an archer. So, you know, good for me. It looks like my Furbolg champion actually killed an archer, presumably by throwing a javelin at it. And I got some sloth. Okay, so. It's resources that are killing me now. I cannot recruit many giants at a time. So, I've got this army. They've moved into Nashen, which was totally undefended. But really, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I have gotten my shades here. So shades are, they have dark power, which isn't really relevant to me. They have spirit sight, which means they can see invisible units. They're stealthy, they float, so they're immune to many movement penalties, as well as the spell, a lot of earth spells, really. And they're ethereal, which means I believe 75% of non-magical attacks, or 80%, will just straight up miss. And then they have this uh, steel strength attack, which does some magical damage, and which is armor negating, but affected by magic resistance. And it has this additional weakness effect, which I forget exactly what that does actually, but it does something pretty cool. Uh, general confusion. Actually, you know what? While you're here, search for magic sites. And we're recruiting the heavy cavalry. We've got that going on. Our giant fortress has been constructed, so now I can recruit Firbolg druids in one turn. Fomorian druids do still need a temple. So I need to get that up at some point here. Beyond that, I'm still in pretty decent shape. 15 province defense will take out those archers pretty easily. Honestly, this army could probably take out those archers without too much trouble. This province is going to be a problem because its province defense is so, so very weak. Uh, let's get this army. 50 enemy units, Jaguar tribe slingers, and Jaguar tribe warriors. I'm actually going to tell this scout to attack. I'm going to put him all the way at the back with orders to retreat immediately. That will give me an exact count of what's in the province uh, without any real risk. And this army is going to move up that way. I'm not too concerned about this army. It's only 30 units. It's Ichthyssatr Warriors. Um, province defense of sufficient magnitude can take it out. And I mean, it's pretty significant magnitude and it costs a significant amount of money, but it can be done. I'm not, not any too, uh, 
worried. Especially because over here I have a little bit of another nascent army building up that I'll be able to move over to really kind of shut down Oceana's uh, ideas. I'm going to take him and keep moving forward a little bit. There's only a little bit of defense here, so I'll take that out. Um, if they want to attack the Eagle Reach Mountains, they're welcome. They will fail. Move Fogartak up here, and I will get a hold of these. Uh, these units here, I'll leave the giant for now, because I want the Fomorian King to pick up the giants. And uh, hopefully at some point fairly soon, we'll be able to launch an assault on Oceana itself. Oh, my scouts. There's Machaka. So Machaka seems to have been having some expansion troubles, possibly. They've not gotten very far, although they have gotten a, um, a throne. Oh, I can't cross the river there. Okay. Where's my other scout? Yeah, move down that way. Okay, no more magic sites, unfortunately. Battle in Ironport. We can view that real quick. Once again, this is my, my main force here, and there's nothing here that will really threaten them too much. Yep, the heavy cavalry got blasted. And, yep, we've turned at least a couple of them into soulless warriors, which kind of helps. The hope is that later on, when I have a very large army, the addition of soulless warriors will kind of help disrupt and distract the, uh, the enemy forces and slow them up. So once again, no casualties. Battling Gladewood. That's right here. Uh, he's sent a, a fairly significant army into Gladewood to face my crappy Slinger Province defense. We're just going to speed through this because it is inevitable. The only question is whether I got a kill before it was over. Uh, nope. Death Marsh. So this is my scout attacking the independents here. So we're going to pause immediately. And yeah, it's literally nothing but Jaguar Warriors and one Jaguar Tribe Priest. So I do not need to be scared of this. Jaguar Warriors are, or Jaguar Tribe Slingers have a spear and a sling and they're pretty crappy. And Jaguar Tribe Warriors have a club sword and a sling and they're also pretty crappy. Although reasonably high damage for what they are. But nothing to be frightened of. And a battle in Halamire. So that was my little army attacking their province. And yeah, this is Deer Tribe Archers and Deer Tribe Archers mainly. And I think my Nemedian Warriors are going to absolutely murder them. I have taken a little bit of damage. But... They're throwing their javelins into the archers. They've killed off all of the infantry. I don't think I've taken any casualties, although I have taken damage. He's taken a chest wound, which is pretty serious, but I think he can handle it. Yep, and they're running. Okay, so. It looks like I lost one Numidian warrior, so that little army is not enough to, uh, to win anything anymore, but it is there. And it has done what I wanted it to do. We are going to give Fogartak these troops. So I now have Erna the Fomorian King. Three air, two water, two death. Research-wise, I'm at level three evocation. Nope, that's not what I wanted. At level three, uh, I have a couple of options. I have Shadow Bolt, which paralyzes, which basically hits somebody and then paralyzes somebody else next to them. I have Fireball, but I don't have any Fire Mages, so that's irrelevant. Don't know why I talked about it. Uh, for Fomorian Kings, potentially when their water is buffed, I have Freezing Mist, which does fatigue damage in an AoE, which can be pretty useful. Uh, I have Lightning Bolt, of course. I have Cold Blast. I have Rain, which is the Screw You Fire Magic spell. Once I get up to level 4, I'll have Thunder Strike. And then at level 5, I'll have Orb Lightning, Falling Frost, uh, and Shadow Blast. At level 4, I also get Bolt of Unlife which, once again, raises skeletons, or zombies. So, Irna, right now, is boosting my research. Uh, but soon, as soon as I manage to recruit enough, uh, I don't need another Fomorian King. 
I need some more Fomorian Druids. As soon as I manage to recruit enough giants, uh, he will be leading a force to besiege Oceana. Uh, general confusion over here. Still can't forge anything terribly impressive because we haven't upgraded our forging capabilities. I could forge him some equipment, which I might actually do because I have quite a few death gems. Um, yeah, I or I could just revive more shades. Let's summon more shades for now. I'm recruiting Furbolg Druids there. I'm recruiting Fomorian Druids here. Actually, since I have the money... Oh, why are you not recruiting? Recruit forever. Please recruit forever. Just continuously recruit. And you are recruiting Fomorian Druids forever, which is good. Actually, I might recruit... Start recruiting Numidian Sorceresses instead. But I'm short on gold, so the Sacred Upkeep bonus... Uh, sacred units cost very little to upkeep relative to their power, so see here, 80 gold per year. The Numidian Sorceress costs 196 gold a year, well over twice. So we've got druids, we've got druids over here. These guys are going to attack that uh, throne because I'm not scared of it. You're still summoning shades. You are going to come back through that direction. I'm hoping to dodge that army, because if I get into a fight with that army, I will lose. And yeah, a couple more summonings of Shades, and then I think General Confusion will probably lead the army of Shades and Cavalry out to do a little bit of fighting. I'm not going to bother to put any defense here, because they're just going to take it back. Uh, Scouting-wise, so there's Machaka's main army. Random assortment of Machakan units. Uh, Machakan units are overall not terribly good, with a couple of exceptions. They do have powerful elephants, and Rhino Clan warriors ain't bad. But the main thing they have going for them is mages. Machaka does have quite good mages, and a number of them. Alright, who's not doing anything? Ah, Fogatak. You need to start moving up this way. And this scout, uh, yeah, you just hide there. Okay, undefended province conquered by the enemy, that's fine. Battle in Hipperboki. And we did dodge the army. Uh, what is this? Ah, it's a little flying wizard. It does have awe, which will make it hard to hurt. And it's fairly low level, but it is carrying a couple of gems, so if we can kill him, or her, rather. Uh, yeah, if we can kill her, we can, uh... That'll definitely be worth it. She's got air shield up, and she's summoning lesser water elementals. So, interesting fun fact. Water elementals become ice elementals when it is cold. And so they have ice protection... Uh, they have Trample, Mindless, they have Snow Move, which regular Water Elementals don't have. And they're just slightly different in stats, basically. But I think my Warriors can still do it. I think my Numidians should be able to handle it, because this is a small one, so it can't trample them very easily. It can still trample them, but it's not as effective. And it's not ethereal, so it does take a lot of damage. Yeah, I think my Numidians could probably handle it. I might lose one. Ah, but it can't trample anymore, because as you stab it, it gets smaller. Ah, she's summoning more of them, but once again... Yep, there goes a Numidian warrior that I lost. That's two. Okay, this is getting a little bit expensive. Oh, no. No, 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 the Numidian Warriors are routing. Ah, but the unmarked champion is going in. He's gonna win this thing alone. Come on, dude. Stab the Siren. Yeah, the Siren's fatigued out. So hopefully we'll be able to kill her. Really hoping here. Up. Oh. Yep, we stabbed her, turned her into a Solus. Excellent. Totally worth it. So yeah, we killed the Siren, we killed the Deer Tribe Archers, we did lose two of our Numidian Warriors and a Slinger. Uh, retreat details. 
Now oh, we lost another unit retreating. So retreating units disperse kind of randomly, and you just kind of have to hope that you get them back. Uh, he attacked me in Vepitre. Interesting. So he's hitting province defense. Gonna take some damage, but probably not a huge amount. He is going to win. I think he just lost his commander, though. No, he didn't lose his commander. And once again, the trampling Ichthatar has made it a curb stomp. So yeah, he lost one Afroy and then trampled all over everything else. And a battle in Death March. I'm just gonna look at that one. I did lose some Furbolg Slingers, but my Fomorian Druids once again did a fantastic job. 18 kills. Let's actually view that battle, see how many people they succeeded in turning into zombies. Oh, there's one. There's a couple. Yeah, so the lightning bolts are definitely doing a ton of damage. They don't necessarily kill with every hit, but they kill enough to uh, seriously disrupt the enemy formation. Uh, oh, that was the wrong button. I did take several slinger casualties because of the slinger fire coming in on my slingers, but totally worth it. And... Wagri, or whatever his name is, is now heroically quick, which means his defense skill has gone up. I think, right? No, he's just gotten higher combat speed. That's pretty cool. So, what else have we got? Up here, we're building up a significant shade and heavy cavalry army. Over here, we're still recruiting giants and druids. Over here, we're recruiting druids. And heavy cavalry. Uh, general Confusion is cursed. Wow. Why? Why are you cursed? What are you cursed from? Ugh. Well, that's frustrating. That means it's very risky to take him into combat because he will become afflicted very, very easily. So I wanted to research Evocation Level 5 for Storm. And I still want to research Storm. But, I'm thinking about how I get it up. Uh, I could get it up with Erna, because he has three air magic. I can give him air gems, two of which I have a reasonable income. Excuse me, I can give him air gems to effectively boost his paths for that spell, which would be effective. I'm going to move everybody in here to collect these two Numidian warriors that have run down here. Two Numidian warriors are totally worth collecting. These guys, I'm going to move down this way to push out this army. Um, this fight with Oceana, I'm not doing badly, but it is really cutting down on my expansion possibilities. Um, just because he can put armies all over the place and uh, just, just, you know, small little throwaway armies. And basically take my expansion targets back as I take, as I capture them. So... General Confusion. Do I want to summon one more pile of shades? Nah. Nah. I'm just going to go in. Actually, that's 11. I'm going to split them up into two groups and then have the shades. So the shades are going to form the center pocket. And the heavy cavalry are going to be on both flanks attacking the rear. General Confusion, meanwhile. What will he cast? He can cast Thunderstrike at this point. And he is automatically blessed. So he gets the... Yeah, so his precision is 15. Plus Thunderstrike has 2 precision. So yeah, he's just going to start casting Thunderstrike and never ever stop, I think. It's, you know, it's nothing other people couldn't do, but it is definitely something he can do. So, he's going to move down there to take them out. Um, or actually, he's going to move up there first, because that's a much more valuable province. And to defend the castle, uh, I am just going to recruit some infantry, I think, to defend the castle. Just for funsies. 
Uh, also, you, I want to forge an owl quill. You, I want to forge an owl quill. And you, I want to forge an owl quill. And you, yep, guess what? I want you to forge an owl quill. Just to give my research that little boost. I know I'm spending a lot of air gems on it, but right at the moment, I don't have anything else that I'm spending air gems on. And I want to kick my research up because I want to finish with Evocation 5 as quickly as I can and move on to enchantment and construction. So army's moving, scouts, I'm going to leave that scout there. This scout can kind of move south to keep track of Machakan expansion. This scout can move over this way. Basically, Oceania is kind of holding me at bay and then expanding over this way while I'm busy, which is not my ideal situation. Uh, yep, you, well, you move up there. You can move down there. And yeah, you're done. Okay, Undefended Province once again captured. Ooh, I got to see a Machakan battle, a battle in Jome. So he went up against a white mage, a mage of death, some mound kings, more mound kings, and literally two soulless. Interesting, and he lost all his wolves, a couple of spider clan warriors. Huh, so this is like entirely commanders. I want to see what happened here. So he's got a bunch of animals, a bunch of crap infantry, and a melee commander with relatively high command. Up against a wizard and literally a bunch of commanders. Interesting, but, but these Mound Kings have no command stat. Like, this Mound King has leadership 55. These Mound Kings don't. I wonder what's up with that. That's weird. Okay. So yeah, and the white mage is spamming skeletons. And casting Bolt of Unlife. Plus hurting morale. Ah, uh, he should have spammed skeletons more. He could have done it. Uh, well, he's fatigued out now. But yeah, and Machaka got totally routed. Huh. Welp. Yeah, the only casualties the independents took there were their soulless. That's the power of death magic. Death magic can be quite frightening. So, Eagle Reach Mountains, they are attacking me. They've got their kind of moderate army here against my horde of province defense backed up by Nemedian warriors. Let's see how it works out for them. They might get their cavalry around to assassinate my They are. They're going to get their cavalry around and assassinate my commanders. Oh dear. Actually, this unmarked champion is holding out like a hero. He is bleeding profusely. So he's probably going to die, but he really, uh, he really hang on, hung on. Yep, he's dead, okay. But these cavalry have been held up enough that... What's happened over here? Yeah, my infantry have chased almost all of the Oceanians off the pitch. Uh, it's only the cavalry left, and the Numidian warriors are going to stab them to death. So there we go. And yeah, I think they're I think they're gone. Couple infantry to clean up. There we go. All right, so let's see how that went. Yep. So they lost their Capricorn. They lost their powerful mage. They lost their Afroys. They lost almost everything. The only things that got away were a couple Ick the Satyrs, one Deer Tribe Archer, and that's it. I lost. I did lose a Fairbolg champion and my unmarked champion. So I lost my profit, which is a real problem. I only lost one Nemedian warrior, though. Retreat details? Uh, well, okay. Let's look at Nashin. Okay, so battle-wise, it's definitely going in my favor. Okay, so this is my... Well, I'm about to cast Thunderstrike. Let's see how that goes. Yep, there we go. Turned them into skeletons. So yeah, Thunderstrike's doing significant damage. The Shades are absolutely wiping out the infantry while the cavalry curl around the flanks. You can also see the AoE damage Thunderstrike does, which is pretty cool. Well, that missed completely. I don't even know what I was aiming at there. 
But the Oceanans are completely destroyed. And uh, at the cost of no casualties. These heavy cavalry really cleaned up. Okay, so I know that works, that's for sure. Uh, that army of Longbowmen is going to get attacked by my main force there. This force has no commanders, so I'm going to recruit a cheap basic commander. I've got giants still recruiting over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight giants, probably not enough. Um, hmm. Can shades go underwater? Yes, shades are amphibious. So that's a thought. I might take my pretender god underwater, actually. Fear Tongue, the Master Lich. That's their, uh, that's their god. How's my research doing? Couple more turns to Evocation 5. Yeah, okay. We're gonna go for it. I'm gonna go back to recruiting Nemedian warriors here for the nonce. We're gonna take my giants, give them to Erna, and Erna is gonna move over here. General Confusion is also going to move down here to recruit more Shades. So, let's see if we can get this attack set up before the end of the episode, shall we? I think we probably can. And once I get rid of Oceana, then my expansion will be basically unchecked over this landmass until I reach Machaka, who shouldn't be much of a problem, because, to be frank, Machaka doesn't seem to be doing any too well. Um... He's having a hard time expanding across this because the river has a tendency not to freeze, especially since Machaka has a hot domain. Um, and so he can't cross this unless there's cold on both sides. And coming down through here, he runs into this province with the undead commanders that he's having trouble getting past. So overall, I think probably once I take out Oceana's capital, I can basically sweep this whole area, take that throne, take that throne, and then probably take that throne with almost no opposition. I also need to capture this throne. Uh, my prophet is dead, so I have to wait for a while before I can create another prophet. Eight commanders are doing nothing. Uh, yeah, you move up there. You can... Oh, gotcha. They're doing nothing because I had them all forge quills. You get a quill, you get a quill, you get a quill, everybody gets a quill. Quills for everyone. I'm not going to forge any more quills because I am getting a little bit low on uh, gems. But we're just going to make them research, research, research. Okay, so my research has now jumped to 230, so I'll be done with evocation in two turns. After that, I'm going to go up enchantment because I'm about to start getting death magic. I'm going to be summoning sorceresses sometime pretty soon and I'm thinking that Ray's dead I think I want to be at enchantment level 4 or thereabouts okay more battles in Vipitre this is just one of those provinces that we are constantly fighting over uh, yeah so they've got longbowmen I think this is another mercenary unit I believe yep it's another mercenary unit but my various lightning bolts are not going to uh, going to be very, very unhappy. Although, really, against all these archers, I should be attacking. I should be attacking more aggressively. And I could wish that my lightning bolts were hitting them, but I think, once again, I think they're out of range. I think the archers are out of range of the lightning bolts. So let's speed things up a little bit. My mages are getting hit with arrow fire. But most of them have air shield up at this point. See, I think when they cast Lightning Bolt and there's no viable targets, it doesn't actually go off. But you still get the sound. That might be it. That might be why I'm seeing all those Lightning Bolts that don't really do anything. Okay, so that's over. Now, this time I took casualties. Those longbowmen did a number on my Firbolg Slingers. I lost 14 of them. But, uh, you know, Firbolg Slingers are honestly pretty expendable. 
And of course, Nashen has been reconquered by the enemy. Let's get some province defense up in here. So now down here, on the other hand, I have quite a significant force. Uh, I'm going to put the giants also under the command of General Confusion. They are going to form a center line behind the shades. Well, actually, I'm not going to be able to take the heavy cavalry underwater. So, no, the shades don't attack rear. Actually, having the shades attack rear might work out. Combat speed 12, combat speed 15, nah. I want the giants to be my attack rear force. So, four giants on the flanks in a line. Attack rear most enemies. Four giants on the flank in a line. Attack rear most enemies. And you guys are just going to attack the closest enemy. So, General Confusion is scripted to spam Thunderstrike. Uh, Thunderstrike does not work underwater, so he's going to have to cast Lightning Bolt or possibly Shockwave instead. Shockwave is close range, but he does have Shock Resistance. Uh, I can summon Water Power underwater. In fact, it can only be cast underwater. But I don't have any really good water spells, so that would probably be irrelevant. Yeah, honestly, I might... Erna, what can Erna cast? Erna can also cast Shockwave, and Erna also has Shock Resistance. So what I might do is, I might... Put Erna and General Confusion both right up there. Actually, right up with the Shades. The Shades are a little slower, but um, since Erna is sacred, he will also be blessed. And have him attack two turns, and then Shockwave times three. Ideally, the idea is the um, two turns of attacking will get him within range, and then the Shockwave, which only has a range of two. I think in order to do that, I'm going to need to put them right up front. So let's get them up there, up there, up there. Actually, it might have to be Attack times three, and then Shockwave times two. Yeah, I think three turns, I think three rounds of moving forward should be enough. So attack, and then shockwave times two, and then advance and spells. This is kind of risky, um, because, of course, I am putting my pretender directly in harm's way. And I'm doing so without having much by way of buff spells. Uh, I have air shield, which isn't relevant underwater, but beyond that, I don't have any buffs. I'm kind of relying on the fact that my pretender is uh, naturally glamoured. And that's about all he has going for him. He does have fear. Um, what I might do is I might forge a horror helmet for each of them, which will help. By giving them more fear, it will help them. Is there anything else cool I could forge? You have two air and some death. Do you have any better armor or something? Or shields? Ooh, shields. Weightless kite shield. That's a thought. What about nature? Can nature give them... I just want to give them something that will kind of help them not die. Protection 16, defense minus 1, parry 4. Yeah, parry 7. Yeah, forge a weightless kite shield, and then I'm going to perform some alchemy to swap some water gems over to air gems, and forge another. I could form an ice aegis. Uh, that's probably not relevant. So I'm going to forge a pair of weightless kite shields. 
Uh, or actually, what's this helmet I have? Oh, it's the ice helmet. Yeah, forge a pair of weightless kite shields. That will give them a little bit more defense. The horror helmets will give them more fear, and the to prevent people from staying in combat near them, and the horror helmets, and the uh, weightless kite shields will give them a little bit more defense. Uh, and with that army, eight giants, 20 shades. I might summon more shades before I go in. I might have both of them, or one of them summon some more shades, but uh, we'll see. This army, meanwhile, can move down here, and I might... Hmm. You actually already have Fear 7. So tell you what. Let's give Yarga these troops. Have these guys up here attacking rear, and these guys in a line holding the center. And let's see how Yarga's, um, Yarga's shockwave does. With the support of all these troops, I think it'll do all right, but just in case, I am going to move these guys. Instead of hold and fire, you're going to attack closest enemies, and you're going to shift down like this so that we cover most of the battlefield. Hopefully, I will catch this army in a pincer movement, um, because in order to go anywhere else, they could go down here, but beyond that, that's about the only place they have. Uh, Rama is going to take these troops. We'll just move these guys up front. And the slingers behind him. Rama will take these troops up there to take that. Because this does have a couple of magic sites that I want. Because they give me gems. And I love gems. I might be addicted to gems. So let's see how it goes. Hopefully well. Okay, looks like I lost a scout. Yes, I lost a scout because I forgot to script him to retreat. Which I should have done. Um, they were probably patrolling. Patrolling can help you find uh, enemy scouts. So this army is scattered. Includes a lot of crap units. Lion Clan warriors are okay, but Machaka militia are crap. Spider Clan warriors are pretty crap. War lions can be useful, but in the hands of the AI are pretty crap. Heavy infantry, horned serpents, light infantry, those are all pretty garbage, really. So it's a big army, but not a scary one. Uh, battle in Spring Spires. Oceana attacked the Independents and lost. So they fought these Horse Tribe Cavalry, which are decent units. They're cheap. Uh, and they have a, a bad ranged attack and a pretty decent Light Lance charging bonus. And they got killed. And they lost their Consort, which is a Priest Commander. So that's always nice. So, battle in Nashen. This is the big sandwichy battle. Let's see what I'm fighting. Uh, where is my... Um, where's the rest of the army? Okay, well that was easy, but, oh, no? Okay, my Numidian warriors fought through there. Vepite. My province defense got run over. Gintmark. Oh, crap. Okay, so they actually attacked me. And I won, but oh no, I lost my king. Well, let me see how this went down. I bet I bet I know how it went down. Yeah, so they've got they took their whole force, including all of their Ichthatars. And by coming towards me, they managed to hit one of my armies instead of get hit by both. So my Fomorian king's advancing. I should have kept him in the back. I should have scripted him for Thunderstrike. He's advancing for three turns, and now he's going to cast... Erna. He's advancing, he's advancing, he's advancing. Isn't he going to cast a spell? Come on, Erna. Erna is casting nothing. Erna is not casting anything because Erna is in melee. And... He has been surrounded. He's been surrounded by Ichthatars. Oh boy. I'm sorry, Erna. I'm sorry that I failed you. You were very expensive, and I misplayed you very badly. He did well, though. He's standing proud. Taking hits, scoring kills. 
doing damage, but there he goes. He went down. Uh, my heavy cavalry won it for me. My heavy cavalry broke through the flank here and went and murdered the commander and all that. Okay, well, that's super, super sad. Wow. That's just really depressing. Those Ichthatars, man. They're the worst. Appreciate details? Okay, fine. Yeah, worldwide event. Oh, construction rituals are cheaper this month. That's nice. It'd be nicer if I hadn't lost my Fomorian king. Yeah, so what happened was they took that army and attacked me. And as a consequence, I got uh, messed up. So let's give you the horror helm and the shield. Gives you a much more defense skill with that higher shield parry. And it also gives you fear of 12. But, uh, yeah. That really sucked. Really, really sucked. Uh, stop recruiting those Firbolg warriors, please. I want another Fomorian king, but I think instead I'll settle for an Emidian sword. Oh, no, I can get a Fomorian king. Take a couple turns, but I can do it. Let me get another Fomorian king. Meanwhile, you... Uh, Corpse Man construction? No. Summon more shades. And you all, uh, Rama, you can keep clearing these guys out. I've got a, I've got one lone heavy cavalry that ran over here for some stupid, stupid reason. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to. Uh, all of you guys can actually, you search. Might as well search for a little bit more air and uh, nature. I'm not gonna bother about the scouts at the moment. We found a magic site in Nashen, the Farm of Plenty, which is nice. I recruited two levels of enchantment, which is great. Another battle in Hipperboki, uh, which I conquered. I did lose a couple of Numidian warriors because they had a war elephant in province defense? Wow. Why did they have a war elephant in province defense? And Gladewood has been conquered by the enemy. Let's see, Spring Spires, Oceana took it over with no problem. Titan Steps. Machaka took it over, but with a big problem. They lost a bunch of units, including four of their war elephants. All of their war elephants. Okay, so. This army needs to move back to Gladewood. Hipperbaki, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of province defense. Oh yeah, this province defense has war elephants. I can recruit war elephants here, but I only have ten resources, so I can't recruit them with any speed. That's fine. So now, all these shades, right down here. Um, general confusion. What spells can you cast with enchantment? Protection from lightning, protection from cold, animate dead, flight, water shield. Okay, so. I think I'm going to change what it is that he's casting. I'm going to cast... First of all, yeah, because I have Freezing Mist, which does fatigue damage. And I also have Falling Frost, but it can't be cast underwater. But since I'm level 5, I do have access to Orb Lightning and Storm, which also can't be cast underwater, but Orb Lightning can. So, we're going to cast Water Shield, which will protect him. We might cast Breath of Winter, will suffer stun damage from the cold. Yeah, cast Breath of Winter. Then summon water power. And then... Nope. Actually, I don't need summon water power. We're going to do that, and then we're just going to orb lightning the crap out of this. Orb lightning, orb lightning, orb lightning. And then just cast spells. Okay. And you'll be right there. So, let's take General Confusion in this army, because there's only 20 units there now. So let's move General Confusion up, and uh, see what we can do with this whole mess. I'm going to get you up here to build a temple, because I want a temple. In order to spread my dominion. My dominion is kind of getting pushed back. We'll have another Fomorian King next turn. Research is going really, really well. I'm going to be hitting enchantment level 4 pretty quickly, which means... I also need to start looking at getting in, getting some sorceresses for that sweet, delicious death magic. 
Uh, Machaka has moved pretty rapidly now. Now Machaka and uh, Oceana are going to start clashing pretty soon. But they still haven't taken these provinces up here, it looks like. Let's look at what province commanders are doing nothing. Ah, all of you. Well, all of you move upwards. Start doing some damage. I'm sorry, this is dragging on a little bit, but I really want to attack Oceana before I end. Uh, a couple new famous heroes, which is cool. Research and enchantment is completed. Battle in Gladewood. Let's see how that went. Uh, yep, wiped him out. Battle in Vepitry. Uh, they sent in... Uh, a small army, including an Afroi Hierophant, and got wrecked. I did lose another Nimbedian and another Slinger, but uh, I did all the damage I needed to. My Nimbedian Warriors did most of the damage, my Fomorian Druids also did some. And some of my Fomorian Druids are now famous heroes. Awesome presence, what does that do? Oh, he has awe and a leadership buff. That's pretty neat. So Awe is a defensive ability that makes people unlikely to attack you. He's got 40 armies there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for it. We're going for it, dude. We're going to rock this thing. Uh, I've only got 38 units, but the siege ability of my Fomorian Giants is tremendous. So I think, I think this will end up okay. Okay, I've got my new Fomorian King. No air magic, no water magic, sorry, but three air and three death, which is pretty cool. Gonna move him. Uh, I've got some Nimedians, don't I? Yeah, Nimedian warriors. Let's give them to him. Lion formation. Uh, hold and fire. Closest enemy. You get up right behind them. Cast. Uh, you can't quite cast Storm. But I'll tell you what I can... So what I can do with him now is I can give him uh, a couple of air gems. And then I can tell you... Uh, let's do conservative magic gem usage. So you can cast... Storm... I don't want conservative magic gem usage then, actually. You can cast Storm... Summon the Storm Power, which will buff you to Air Magic 4. And then you can stop start dropping Thunder Strikes. And cast Spells. So you can start moving out. Uh, Mulling, you can research. Oh, also, don't I have some items left? Yes, I can give you the Weightless Kite Shield. So right now, Defense Skill 13. Weightless Kite Shield defense skill goes up to 17, which is pretty sweet. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what else you need to do. Uh, you need to bless yourself. Blessing. To get that precision buff. Okay. Moving on up. Uh, and actually, I'm also going to take... Moling and Lay. They are going to be right up there. I'm going to take two Nemedians to bodyguard each of them. So they will... The goal there is that if anybody tries to flank me, uh, they will be stopped by the four Nimidian warriors bodyguarding the group. So I'm casting Storm first round. Which means you guys, instead of that, you cast Blessing first round. Both of you. That means you don't need to cast Blessing. So you can cast um, more Thunderstrike. So you both cast Blessing while he casts Storm. Then you summon Storm Power. Yep, summon storm power. And summon storm power only has 10 fatigue. So then you also can thunder strike because you will have three air. So, and we will call this two. We'll do that. Okay, so now 
I will be able to get a whole bunch of Thunder Strikes. So you lot move out. You will be my second little army. You guys keep pushing. Uh, and I'm going to put some province defenses in here because I'm sick of losing this province. Uh, that's a ridiculous quantity of province defenses for a province that is entirely slingers, but whatever. Actually, I'm going to cut that down because I want money to put province defenses in my more valuable province up here. Which might also have more effective defense. Yeah. Okay, we're going to attack Oceana. This might be a terrible idea. I might be totally outgunned. But at the very least, I think I'll be able to put them under siege. Because unless this army is patrolling, all I'll have to fight is the province defense. And I think my shades and my giants backed up by uh, General Confusion and his orb lightning should be able to hammer through the province defense. Uh, you know what? We'll find out. Everybody's researching over here. Everybody's researching over there. Cross your fingers. Okay, remnants of the dead prophet's power have left this world, so I can recruit another one. Okay. Yes, we have started to destroy the fort in Oceana, so we won. Let's view the battle. Okay, so, starting formations. I've got my giants on the flanks, my shades forming my center pocket, my king behind them. And I am facing, oh, I am facing not just the province defense, but I believe, I believe this is his army as well. Ichthatars, an Afroy lord, uh, these are more Afroys, well, uh, Ichthasatr commander, yeah, I think this is, I think this is everything and the kitchen sink. So, let's see how it goes. Okay, General Confusion's got his water shield up which boosts his defense by five again. So his defense is now ridiculous, which is good. My troops are advancing. He's got fire going on? Yeah, he's cast fire shield on some of his units. I'm getting breath of winter going. Okay, I've, now I've got breath of winter, so now I'm surrounded by a chill aura of eight. He's got some flanking units. Uh, my giants, however, are holding up very, very well. They are taking damage, but they're doing a lot of damage as well. I've dropped the orb lightning back here. Which is doing quite good damage as well, although that Ichthatar is still has a lot of hit points. Uh, my shades are, aren't doing much damage, but they are holding very effectively. In spite of castings of ashes to ashes. And my giants up here have kind of flanked and are chewing through these Ichthasatchers. Uh, you are at fatigue. General Confusion is at fatigue 58. Uh, his hit points are really high. Higher than his current maximum, interestingly enough. Let's speed this up a little bit see what happens. So we are being flanked. General Confusion is in melee, but he's doing really well because he has this powerful magical attack. Despite the fact that he's cursed, his chill aura is also inflicting a lot of fatigue on the people around him, which makes it very hard for me to hit him. I'm losing my giants and my shades very slowly, but they're doing enough damage that General Confusion is managing to hang on. He just lost his glamour, but his defense skill is still 23, and the harassed penalty for taking multiple attacks isn't adding up too quickly. Yeah, his defense skill is still hovering around 23, 24, and we've won. We routed them. I lost half my giants doing it, but I've cleared the enemy out. So yeah, I lost 5 giants and 18 of my 30 shades, but I destroyed his army and I destroyed his province defense, or well, at least I battered through it. So, Oceana is now under siege, which means not only he can't recruit, but he's... Oh no. Oh no. Okay, well, uh, my pretender is now has dementia, which makes him bad. Uh, he also has a limp, which is also a problem. So he got stabbed a little bit too much during that fight, but it's okay. It's okay. We can manage it. It's okay. Uh, I've got them under siege. The fortification wall integrity 100. 
The walls are moderately damaged. More time is required to break them down. Okay, fine. Okay, so I've got to get him, this Fomorian king, also underwater, is what this is telling me. And I need to bring with him... Ideally, more giants. Uh, I'm recruiting another Fomorian king, which is fine. Uh, I'll want to swap over to a Nemedian sorceress pretty soon, but I, I need more giants to get underneath here, and I need to summon some water creatures. Yetis are not underwater capable. Um, hmm. This is a bit of a pickle. Well, but anyway, we succeeded in the attack, so we've got Oceana under siege, which is going to make it very, very difficult for them to continue to expand, which is good. It looks like I did lose in Palamir. Ah, they had an army there, and they lost most of it, but it did succeed in destroying my army, and only two units survived. Okay, fair enough. It was a small army. Grain Coast. I lost three Nemedian warriors, presumably to the charge of the heavy cavalry. Actually, I lost them to the light cavalry, um, but they did their job. And you can see here, I only lost three units, but they killed seven, so four of those were undead created by me. And, uh, but I think we're doing okay. We're, we've expanded somewhat. We've taken this northern section. Uh, it is spring in the year two, so we've covered about another year. And we have pushed through to besiege Oceana, and we'll be getting some more, uh, giant king reinforcements fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, I am, I do want to forge some more magical items for them, if possible, just to kind of help keep them alive. Uh, Coral Blade might actually be nice. Less damage, though, I think. I can't forge any of those. What could I forge? Hmm. Copper Plate? Nah. Anyway, we'll get to that next time. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, stay tuned. There will be more. Uh, as always, I make no promises as to the quality of my gameplay. Also, holy crap. Wow. That's scary. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to deal with that situation sometime soon. But uh, that will be in the next episode. So take care, y'all. And I'll see you next time.